Welcome back to your dad me at hello. This is a podcast about two dads talking about whatever we want. You didn't ask for it, but here we are. You can check us out in a number of places. Anchor, uh, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, a bunch of other places. Uh, Google, Radio Public, Pocket Cast, Breaker. Um, check us out. Please um, let us know how we're doing. Hit us up on YouTube. Uh, subscribe. Uh, write some comments. Um, but we have uh, a number of episodes uh, available for download now. Um, this episode today, Andy, what are we talking about? We are talking about wrestling factions from the 90s to the current. We could, I don't think we could talk about the 80s because it's the Four Horsemen. Everybody knows that. So why bother? Let's just let's do what we know best, the 90s till now. Yeah, just a reminder, we took a little break from wrestling. The last couple of weeks, we've been talking about top 90s TV shows. We have a winner in that uh, by this point. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed those. But we're back to wrestling. Uh, both of us started watching wrestling in the 90s into the 2000s. So while I did go back and watch a little bit of the 80s, and I'm sure you did too, um, it, I was not into it until about 1995. So um, we are talking about factions today, so that's not tag teams. So the Hart Foundation with uh, just the two of them, uh, not up for grabs. Any sort of tag teams, the Legion of Doom, uh, things like that. Maybe we'll do a tag team one in the future. But for today, we are talking about groups and factions only. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we kind of have a couple that might be potential discussion for people. Oh, maybe they might not be really a faction, but we're considering them a group or a faction. More than two people, that's that's really what we're getting down to. Yeah, I think all of our groups have more than two people wrestling. So I think that's that's where we stand. I didn't not we can't have like two people wrestling and one manager. You know, we had to have more than two people wrestling. I think we did that. And can I say, we had to remove one group that would have clearly won it had we put them in there, and that was Men on a Mission. So they are not in this, unfortunately, because it was, it was just way too easy of, of a choice. So sorry, folks. There were there were a couple of ones that made it. We, we did a top 32 originally. Today we are going to do the top 16. So we did get rid of 16 that were actually in the mix. I know the Job Squad was on there. Um, Raven's Flock was on there. Um, so little, there were a little upset they weren't in there. Many, many but, good ones. But really, it was only Raven and then a bunch of jobbers. So, you know. It are, is we, are we pretending that Raven wasn't a jobber for a very long time? Not in WCW. That's no, true. No, sir, he was not. That's true. U.S. champ. Do you remember when that guy got pulled out of the ring by his hair from a fan? <laughs> yeah. That's good yeah. stuff. He capped it together, though, Raven. Like he wanted to deck that guy so bad, but he, he did. Like, he did. It he, wasn't. He, he kept that cool, calm composure somehow. I, I would have, I would have lost it. Not like in WWF where like Stone Cold Triple H would just stomp the guy until and the ref too. Jericho. Just get in on it. Oh yeah, yeah. We were just watching Botchamania with Jericho just wanted to go hog wild on that guy. Uh, today, just to remind you, if this is your first time listening, um, we are going through a tournament bracket of randomized, uh, a bracket of 16 of the top factions uh, as voted on by Andy and I, um, and we will discuss those. They are randomized, so sometimes our favorites are stacked up against one another, and sometimes it's super easy uh, to determine who's going to win that round. But uh, either way, by the end of today, we will have a top faction of all time or 90s and 2000s uh, as decided on by andy and i so again uh if you have any thoughts on that or you disagree with us please let us know andy yeah and um are we still having a third opinion here oh uh, we are we are randy's back uh so if you Welcome missed back him, randy if you missed him uh he was in the first uh and second podcasts uh, third and fourth podcasts were uh, Ryan, uh, not to be uh, confused with Randy. Ryan's the one that talks, um, and Randy is is just a computer. So. Randy's like a. Oh, you had to get. You had to. I was trying to go kayfabe here and say that <laughs> Randy was just a silent partner, but um. It's little Randy. <laughs> oh, oh man! All right, let's get this started. I know you're probably on your way to work, driving in the car, listening to us. Uh, so we want to make sure you hear who the top faction is before you get there. Let's start with round number one. 
Uh, we have the NWO versus Aces and Eights. I mean, is there really any competition here as to who's going on? Um, of course, it's the NWO. Uh, the NWO was revolutionary um, in really bringing outsiders, huh? outsiders, you get it, NWO, <laughs> outsiders into wrestling and put wrestling into the mainstream. Hall and Nash coming in, you know, were they with WWF? Were they with WCW? You know, it was the whole big question. Hogan coming in, um, NWO exploded. Aces and eights um, were big for for TNA. Um, really propelled Bully Ray into a main event status there. Uh, he was a two time champion, and then you just had a list of a bunch of other people, and they kind of changed throughout. I think they did a good job. I think there was a few months there at the beginning where you didn't know who was who, um, you know, what wrestler was under the under the mask. Um, but it was very short lived. Um, I think PWI um, put them as the best feud against TNA, but then the Wrestling Observer said that they were the worst gimmick. So it was kind of like, depending on what your preference was, whether or not you like them or, or not, but you you just can't compare them to Devon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they did. Uh, no, you're right. I mean, it, this is one of those situations where if they were against anyone else outside of the NWO, they might stand a chance. I mean, they did have some really cool things. Bully Ray was in there. Um, you know, they had people like uh, Taz was their spokesperson for a little while. Yeah, Devon and Bully Ray. Um, even Garrett Bischoff, D'Lo Brown uh, was in there for a little Mr. while. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Um, it made me watch TNA for a little while when I didn't really watch TNA. So it did its purpose for a little while. But NWO, I mean, to see uh, the outsiders come into WCW the way that they did um, through the audience, um, having Hulk Hogan uh, turn heel, essentially, um, a lot of really cool moments. Eric Bischoff as their spokesperson uh, was was great. They lost it for me when they started to span into two or three different groups. I stopped watching it. So I, I almost know nothing about when they did the red and black um that was it the wolf pack uh things like that but nwo as a whole uh with just the three of them it definitely revolutionized so i'm gonna vote for for nwo as well moving on uh we have the main event mafia versus the new day same thing here main event mafia was a who's who of the wrestling game kurt angle you had sting kevin nash booker t uh scott steiner Samoa Joe, and then Taz somehow finagles his way back into another group <laughs> there. Um, I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve to be there, but he, two groups right off the bat. Uh, but again, very short run uh, in TNA. And then you got the New Day, Kofi, Xavier, Woods, and Big E. Um, very, you know, they've been together for, what, six years? I, I think when they first started, I was like, oh, please don't make this like a comedy gimmick um you know when they're doing kind of like that preacher kind of a thing i actually you know i didn't i didn't hate it but you know it was wwe sorry there's a bug flying on me um <laughs> <laughs> you know and when a new gimmick comes out you kind of ha don't have very high hopes for things but um they made it their own and they get a lot of leeway and they say things and do things that you're sometimes you're like wow i can't believe they're even allowed to to do that and Vince is okay with it. Um, I mean, look at what they wear in their heads with the unicorn. Come on. This mm -hmm. is supposed to be a PG, you know, show. Um, they know what they're doing. Um, so when looking at both groups, I'm going, I got to go with New Day. I just feel like there's longevity, there's consistency, and the fans just love them. I love them. They're great. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to get into a tag team for six straight years and still like them just as much. Um, they, people get old pretty quick in the wrestling world, and the New Day's still going strong. I'm listening to their podcast. Um, you know, I know that uh, Xavier has his own YouTube channel there with Up, Up, Down, Down. Um, and just some really cool stuff. They're really cool people. You can tell they're friends. 
uh, which really, I think, makes watching them on TV really, really good. They have turned some of the crappiest gimmicks into some really fun things. The New Day, like you said, was going to be this gospel um, gospel gimmick, uh, the power of positivity. Um, and they turned yeah. it into, you know, one of the funnier and also serious uh, tag teams when Kofi Kingston you know, did the whole uh, angle with Randy Orton, you know, where they went and, and looked back on the Randy Orton calling him stupid and, and just really pumping him up. It was the Daniel Bryan story of of, of that year, you know, where you're, you're pumping up Kofi Kingston to come up and they made him credible and he, and he lasted with the title for a little while. I wish it was longer, but um, but it was good. Now it looks like Big E might be heading in that direction. Yeah. I'll um, say, by the way, you just said the S word and my daughter was very upset because she watched our first podcast and I said, s-t-u-p-i-d and she and i said do i have to apologize to rj and she said yes so she reminds me now at least three times a day that i said a bad word and i had to apologize to rj uh, <laughs> that i said it so now that she heard she's gonna hear you say that so now you have to apologize to me i'm 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 thinking that there is some neglect going on that you're making her watch 45 <laughs> minute podcasts of us but <laughs> she <laughs> Yeah, my I'm, like, I can't, I'm gonna get child services called on me. <laughs> um, one of my kids was was literally like, "What do you call your podcast? A boring conversation with RJ and Andy." <laughs> I was like, "No, yes. that's what our friends call it." <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So a new day moves on uh, to the next round here. Next up, undisputed era versus the Ministry. Do you want to lead this off? I, I do. Um, I'll talk about uh, the ministry for a second here, just because why not? It's the only uh, airplay they'll get. Um, ministry of Darkness was the Undertaker's group here. I feel like looking back, and maybe I'm just lost because it's been so long, there was the Ministry of Darkness. There was the corporate ministry. There was the corporation. Like There was the Stephanie McMahon, Helmsley era. I feel like all of that just blended into me, and I almost remember nothing about the corporation other than there was a ton of stuff that should have made me very um uh nauseous as a <laughs> churchgoer at the time i remember there was a couple of crucifixion scenes at one point and there was wasn't there the kidnapping of stephanie mcmahon or was that in the corporate ministry i can't remember but I remember. um it just a ton of weird stuff um but it had a undertaker bradshaw farouk midian viscera uh, viscera the brood um so i mean it was a Good name group, uh, but Undisputed Era, for me, is probably one of my favorite groups of all time. Um, Adam Cole, Bebe, is uh, one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Um, I've, j I've grown to love Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly through this group. Uh, seeing Kyle O'Reilly get his due uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago was really, really cool. Um, Roderick Strong, um, another guy that I, I liked but not a lot, and then when he came into the Undisputed Era... I remember when he first joined, I was like, this dude's always going to be that fourth guy. And then all of a sudden, no, it's all four of them are just a, a, a really good unit. They've been around for three years now. Um, so Undisputed Era for me. Uh, I'm also going to choose Undisputed Era. And I want to take it back to what you said about like the whole crucifixion thing with the Ministry of Darkness. So when they did that with The Undertaker, that's when like Kurt Angle, right? Then he, he start to sign with WWE around that time. Then he, he make mention of that. I think you're thinking of ECW. When he went to ECW, well, they did it there too. All right. So with, he was there on the tryout or whatever. He was there to visit ECW, and they do the crucifixion angle, which they didn't know about, that he didn't know was going to happen with Sandman. Mm -hmm. And he got, you know, he was, he was angry at that. He didn't like that and decided not to sign with ECW. But then WWE does the same exact thing, and he's like, oh, they're paying me more. <laughs> like not much of a moral high ground there i guess when the when the pay comes in um i love how your vote for the undisputed era has turned into a bashing kurt angle <laughs> <laughs> he's an american hero screw that guy no i like kurt angle it's just that one thing is funny because um, <laughs> i heard him say that and i was like dude they did the same exact thing but undisputed era um I was fans of these guys before they came to WWE, so I was super excited when they went to NXT. Um, Bobby Fish was somebody who was always underrated, even on the indie scene, um, but he was one of a guy that I like to see 
um you know he, he kind of came up a little bit here and there in ring of honor and i was like who is this guy like he was awesome i talked about in the first podcast i went to go to a show him versus roderick strong because those two were like some of my favorites um because of just how hard hitting they were um kyle o'reilly was another guy him and adam cole came in as two virtual like unknowns in ring of honor at the same time and they basically put them together because they didn't have anything else for them they're like all right we like both these guys but what else do we have um so there's a lot of history with this group um and they're just they're just uh, phenomenal you know they're just one, they're one of my favorite groups so undisputed era easy pick for me all right undisputed era moving on uh the next one is the corporation speaking of uh versus the nation of domination you're gonna have to speak to this one because i didn't really watch um either of these groups i kind of did a little bit of history and i you know i've seen a lot of i wasn't present during it so a lot of my stuff is like seeing it and hearing it after the fact so you yeah present what was that (laughs) you know you spoke about the corporation a little bit but the what corporation for me, yeah, I'll speak to them first because my vote's going to go to the Nation of Domination. I mean, for me, they were uh, a hugely underrated uh, part of the Attitude Era, um, responsible for the rise of the Rock, um, and so huge, huge deal there. But the corporation, McMahon was leading it. You had the Rock in it. You had Ken Shamrock. You had Pat Patterson, Briscoe, Sergeant Slaughter, um, even Shawn Michaels for a short time was in it. Um, and it, it was just, it's a take on McMahon leading a group. I mean, they did it with Stephanie and, uh, the Helmsley era. They did it again with, uh, what's best for business, uh, years later, uh, against Daniel Bryan. Um, but this was the first time you really saw it. I mean, it, it was McMahon versus Austin for a while prior to this, but, but McMahon in the corporation was the first time I think that you really started to see, uh, this villainous group. Um, so while I, I do think they're good. Uh, nation of domination they were crossing um you know lines at, at that time as part of the attitude era i mean you had uh, farouk who came in with the dumbest gimmick um you know i think he had a football helmet on like american gladiators style outfit um and he was terrible and he was fighting ahmed johnson at the time and uh, finally um they put him in this group and it was him and kama mustafa the rock d'lo brown and then there was like a billion other people that showed up at, at some point. There was a rap group, um, JC Ice and Wolfie D. Um, right. You had, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Savio Vega, Mark Henry, Ahmed Johnson at one point. Um, but just seeing them come out, raise their fists in the air, nation domination. It's something that I think could exist today. I was going to go with the corporation here. I, I feel like this really elevated the Vince character and that character of that he's almost like the devil mm. like he's he's such a heel and probably in real life too for the most most part um but you know rock was playing the the heel against you know against stone cold i think those were important pieces where um it was important as far as the the narrative of the nation of domination they had so many uh, infamous um wrestlers and characters in that group you know owen hart was in there too uh which was you know you think of nation domination you don't think owen hart but he you know he he was in there um i don't i i'm i'm gonna disagree with you here just because i think so i think the corporation from a story standpoint and the whole you know vince versus stone cold i think played a more important piece of history in wrestling than than maybe the nation did yeah, who knows? Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm not. Right, right. Maybe I'm doing it just to well, see what Randy thinks. Well, Randy has decided, and he is going with the corporation as well. So they're moving on. Yeah, so I'm we have man. officially eliminated the Nation of Domination in the first round of the greatest factions of all time. They they also didn't have like a heavyweight champion. Like everybody held like IC or lower in there. Uh, you're correct. Yes. Uh, now, the rock rock was intercontinental and Delo was European, but European championship. That's a championship right there. <laughs> I'll say, but Farouk could have held the world title. He did a WCW. He mm-hmm. was somebody who was in that role who could have. So maybe I'm choosing the corporation because maybe the WWF did wrong by the nation. 
maybe they could have been a lot bigger than than what they were. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're seeing the greatness of it years later. Hmm. All right, so the corporation moves on. Uh, the next one's a little bit newer. We have the Wyatt family uh, versus the Inner Circle. All right, I'm pulling up my notes here. I came prepared today. All right, Wyatt's in Inner Circle. Um, I'm going with the Wyatts. Uh, Inner Circle, I think, is just um, too new uh, to really have much of an impact yet. Um, Chris Jericho, as the champion, AEW um, was, you know, as the leader of the group, they had Jack Hager, you had Proud and Powerful, um, and um, Sammy. And Sammy's a great character, and he's doing a lot of cool things. Uh, Proud and Powerful, I think they... You know, they were big in the indies. They were big in, in TNA. Um, one of my favorite tag teams. They're just very cohesive. Um, saw them a lot in Beyond Wrestling. Um, but the Wyatts were really, really impactful. When they first came in in NXT, you know, you got Bray Wyatt delivering these really unusual promos where you didn't know what he was saying half the time. But it drew you in. And he had the, that Waylon Mercy, Cape Fear kind of character. And it was totally different than anything that you'd really seen in a long time. The entrance with the lantern coming down. Lights are out. Everybody's got their cell phones out, you know, with the light. Um, and then you had the powerhouses with Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. To do his dirty work most of the time, like Bray didn't have to wrestle all the time. Um, and he had them to kind of to kind of get in there and, and get their hands dirty. Um, I think they should have done more with them. I think that it took a really long time to put the belt on Bray. I think they missed their opportunity um, early on, where would have been where the, there would have been more impact. Um, but between the two groups, like I said, maybe the proud um, uh, inner circle will get there. Chris Jericho is probably, if he ever sees this, is going to send me uh, a hate-filled um, tweet or something like that. Then I'm a, a stupid idiot or whatever. But uh, I'm going with going with the Wyatts here. All right, all right. Um, I, I would I would agree with your points. The inner circle, though, the importance of the inner circle was keeping AEW relevant. They came out. They had great wrestling, but they didn't have the uh, backup in in the form of Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho coming in being their first champion. Some people didn't like that. I think he carried the company for a while because he was yep. memorable and he was uh, a, a big name. Um, and then to have uh, Jake Hagar come over, uh, not a huge name in WWE by any means, but like it was someone you recognized, you knew. They used him much better in AEW so far. Sammy Guevara is someone that a lot of people didn't know, and he's just escalated, uh, elevated himself. Sorry, Santana Ortiz. So they're they're super important to AEW's history, and I think even if they were to disband today, AEW would have to put them up there as one of the reasons they they were they were uh, successful in the beginning. Uh, Wyatt family, though, like you said, the Wyatt family Shield feud for me was great. Uh, their matches, the six-way matches that they had, um, were awesome. Um, so uh, I won't speak too much more on that. Wyatt family for me as well. I thought you were, I thought you were swaying me there. <laughs> All right, next up is uh, The Shield versus The Heart Foundation. This is The New Heart Foundation from 1997. Um, if you don't mind, uh, I, I'm going to start this one because I feel like The Heart Foundation... You probably weren't watching it uh, around the time they came back. Um, but the Hart Foundation reformed with the whole Canadian-American uh, feud going on um, against Bret Hart's nemesis, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um, I just remember I was on their side. I liked the Hart Foundation. I liked Bret Hart. I thought Owen Hart was one of the best wrestlers ever. The British Bulldog was such a great wrestler. Brian Pillman was such an awesome mouthpiece. Used to be a great wrestler. In WWE, it didn't work out for him. He had been injured by that point. Um, but him, like, if you remember, do you ever remember when Stone Cold made it into Brian Pillman's house, like on live TV? Like, on. Yeah, ridiculous stuff. It yeah. wouldn't, you know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work now. But, um, but one of the best pay per views in the history um, of WWE was in your house, uh, Canadian Stampede. Um, if you haven't seen it, 
the five uh, Heart Foundation versus uh, Stone Cold, Legion of Doom, Goldust, um, yep. Ken Shamrock, if I'm if I'm correct. Yep. Um, amazing. And the roar of the crowd because they were in Canada. Uh, one of the best matches you should you should definitely go and check it out. So um, uh, it's hard because I, the Shield is awesome too. Um, for me, they were never my thing. Uh, Dean Ambrose for me is overrated. I, I don't think he is uh, was used in WWE well at all. Um, uh, in AEW, great. Uh, he's doing way better in my opinion. But as the loose cannon kind of. Well, then he wasn't overrated. He was just underutilized yeah i guess so um but people love dean ambrose like when they whenever he'd come out his music would start they'd go nuts and i'm just like i don't really care uh seth rollins turned into obviously one of the best wrestlers of all time um roman reigns at the heel right now amazing uh i'm gonna go with the heart foundation just because um it's the heart family you really can't go wrong with anything they do so the heart foundation so yeah I, i've i've caught up on a lot of all that stuff because you know that was really around the Montreal screw job, you know, right before mm. it. Um, so a lot of their their stuff is is all over the network and magazines, you know, all all over different DVDs. Um, you know, the Brett DVD, the Brett book. So I've 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 got a lot of understanding of kind of what was going on. I think that group was really unique because in the U.S. they were heels, and in Canada they, they were faces. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, and Vince was like, what, what am I supposed to do here? Um, and you know, they had very unique members, you know, you had the Brett, uh, Jim Danville, Nightheart, you know, they were the original Heart Foundation. Then you had Bulldog and there was all family. And then you had Brian Pillman out there who was the loose cannon who, you know, unfortunately was sidelined, but he was a very pivotal member of that group and could still perform um you know even outside the ring however that group didn't really last very long if you really look back at it um i like to look at longevity of a group you know you can have a faction once they do something really crazy during a short amount of time i don't know if i i take that into consideration i'm not saying that's my main thing the shield you have three guys who you knew who dean ambrose was you knew who seth rollins were if you were following you know wrestling and um you know even prior to their move into wwe you know like who the heck who's this guy and at the beginning he didn't really talk a lot but he was cool like you're like ah oh, all right like i'd like to see a little bit more of this guy and they kind of kept him in the background shield also had like the cool entrance music they came out from the stands like no one else was doing that like they're coming through the crowd um you know fans could touch them um, you know, be part of be be part of the shield really they had the whole fist thing um they also had those really cool promos that were different than anybody else's where they were holding the camera themselves and they were you know saying you know their their little slogans whatever and then it was to the point where you're like which one of these guys is going to break out and be the star and seth rollins was the one who did the the original turn and they pushed him and then it was you know you know, Dean at that point already been U.S. champion, but like you were saying, I think he was underutilized. He, even before um, WWE, I saw him in a match. At, I think it was Dragon Gate USA against Jimmy Jacobs, and I said, "Man," I was like, and I knew John, I knew John Moxley beforehand because I'd seen some other stuff. But that, when I saw him in person, I was like, "This guy's gonna be in WWE within a year, and he's gonna be a star." And I don't know if it was a year or two, whatever, he was there. And um, so I had my eye on, on on Dean, and now he's in AEW, and he's totally I, I think he gets to be himself a little bit more, and he was kind of pigeonholed into a, what he didn't want to be, um, you know, when he became singles. But in the Shield, they could they could be cool, and they had those great six man matches all the damn time. It didn't matter who they were going against, whoever was on the other side, it was going to be a great match. And for that, I'm going with the Shield. All right, all right. That was really long-winded. <laughs> I can't, uh, I can't argue uh, with some of the points you're making. I will say that uh, the Heart Foundation, the new Heart Foundation, was together from March to November, but the impact that they made in that short time, we're still talking about today. The Shield had to reunite 17 times 
to to keep them in our memory. But the whatever. Brothers of Justice. Yeah, they won five Slammy Awards. I'll give them that. Breakout Star of the Year, Faction of the Year, uh, Believe in the Shield, Hashtag of the Year, and uh, What a Maneuver of the Year, Reigns Spear in 2013. But, um, well, Randy, Randy agrees with you, and the Shield uh, is moving on. So we have gotten rid of the Hart Foundation in the first round, and I hate you for it. Randy's a smart guy. <laughs> Next one, Bullet Club versus Evolution. Um, you've been talking a lot, so... <laughs> I'm going to <laughs> – actually, you're going to have to speak on this one. Uh, I was not around for Evolution. Uh, I left when Evolution started in 2003. Uh, somewhere – I, I, I want to say I was done in 2003, 2004, but uh, obviously Triple H, Ric Flair, Batista, Randy Orton, literally people that will go down as some of the best people um, in wrestling – um, I was never personally a Batista or a Randy Orton fan. So for me, Triple H and Ric Flair were the better part of that. Um, Ric Flair um, says that evolution is really what brought his um, confidence back in the business. Um, and he really um, thanks Triple H for that as well. Um, so obviously great music, by the way, too. Uh, great song. For me, Bullet Club is just so big and so uh, disjointed. Um, that I, I, I never know what we're talking about. I mean, you had it in the beginning when it was Prince Devitt, then you had AJ Styles, then you had Kenny Omega, now you have Jay White. I don't even think Jay White's version is Bullet Club anymore. Um, after Kenny Omega uh, left in 18, it wasn't really the thing anymore. But um, I was always obsessed with the um, enigma of the Bullet Club, like the shirts, people, you know, everybody knows them. Um, the fact that we have Prince Devitt, AJ Styles uh, in the same place, and WWE hasn't really acknowledged it, and I'm mad about that. Um, Adam Cole, you know, is is there too. Um, Kenny Omega in AEW is one of the best wrestlers of all time. Um, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, so many different people in it. Um, but for me, the Bullet Club starts to like diminish because they just were so all over the place. Um, and they're in like 80 organizations, so I just never know. You can never follow through with what's happening. But uh, man, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the Bullet Club still, even though I've said all that, just because I don't know enough about Evolution. Um, and other than the theme song, I don't know anything about their history. Um, so yeah. yeah, I mean they're they were kind of a play of the Four Horsemen. Um, you know, Ric Flair was kind of the the older, experienced mentor, kind of kind of. Uh, member Triple H was the champ, so he was the present, <clears throat> and then you had the future in both Randy Orton and Batista. Um, and you know, Randy Orton ended up winning the title, uh, really. Uh, at one point, he was, I think, he was what the youngest champion at that point. I think he beat uh, the guy you can't say. Um, and then they had the whole thumbs down thing, and they they turned on Randy Orton. That was a cool moment. Um, they held all the titles at one point and then whatever you had Batista turn, you know, yeah, but they, they were cool. You know, they were the, they were the new four horsemen, you know, they, they wore their suits, whatever. Mark Jindrak was going to be in there until they said, you're not the right fit. <laughs> if you ever watch those documentaries, but they had a decent, they had a decent run. Um, but I want to go with the bullet club for all the reasons that you mentioned, they were bigger than wrestling. Here's a group that you had foreigners in Japan making a huge impact in Japan um, to an international level where you have people here in the States wearing Bullet Club shirts. Anytime I wore a Bullet Club shirt, literally somebody would come up to me and say and start talking wrestling to me. Um, they made it cool again. They were, they're the modern day NWO mm-hmm. where you saw, you saw that merchant, like that merchandise. I'm wearing a, I'm wearing a young buck shirt right here. <laughs> All about merch money. That's what they were. Uh, yeah, they did have a lot of moving parts to it. They always have like a different leader. Somebody left, somebody came back in. They do stuff with the ring of honor. They do stuff in new Japan. Um, so there's a there. I agree with you. There's a lot of that. It's kind of hard to follow sometimes, but from um, a bigger impact on the wrestling industry, I think the Bullet Club takes that. All right, moving on. Bullet Club to the next round. 
Finally, uh, last one in round one, DX, D-Generation X versus Nexus. Nexus was cool. Um, <laughs> when they, that first night, if that was it, if that was just their one night and we're done, they win the entire thing. That was like the coolest thing ever. Because here you, you got a, a group of virtual unknowns to to wwe you know they were on this nxt show that they did that was kind of weird um and, you know daniel bryan was the the independent darling that you know people knew about and then there's a bunch of other people you're like i don't really know who these guys are then they were just thrown together this wild night they come in and they destroy the place it's what everything retribution wants to be um but they can't mimic that um, and then, of course, you get Daniel Bryan immediately gone because he chokes Justin Roberts with a, a necktie. Um, and then he goes back on the indies, and he's he's signed in a few months back again as probably a little punishment for him. But um, but after that, it was like they didn't go anywhere with it, and it was really disappointing. They tried to push Wade Barrett a little bit. They They had these matches, and people started leaving the company or – just getting hurt and they didn't do it they didn't do anything after that and then there's dx uh you know you can talk about dx but i don't think there's any comparison so i'm going with dx all right uh yeah i wasn't around for nexus i came uh, back into wrestling the end of 2012 um but uh you know some really good people were in it wade barrett um who's now what commentator for nxt right Mm -hmm. um daniel bryan who obviously will go down as one of the better wrestlers uh, of all time darren young was an awesome wrestler for a while there obviously he wasn't that big but uh skip sheffield uh was that ryback right ryback, yeah. um, ryback was cool for a moment uh is as yeah. corny as he is now and you look back and you're like ah, whatever but he was cool at the time um yeah. and and he was, wasn't a bad wrestler at all heath slater uh Atunga, um and all that deal so husky harris was in it for a little bit um you know so cm punk led it for a little bit too um so it did its thing but dx i mean best theme song of all time probably um it, you know Shawn michaels triple h china alone rick rude was an awesome group and then you had the new age outlaws into that um and x Pac. i mean they can they've reunited a billion times and every time you do and you hear that music you are just wow it's dx again uh, they can make yeah, fun of themselves. Yeah, every time I hear the music and then they come out, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> I, see, for me, it's one of those things. Like, uh, you know, they can come out all they want. They make fun of themselves now. They they don't take themselves too seriously. Um, it's not the DX of old for sure, but um, they can keep doing it all they want for me. Um, the DX shirts back in the day are like the Bullet Club shirts now. Uh, they were everywhere. Um, I had a cousin who told his teacher to suck it and almost got expelled. Um, you know, like just everybody, everybody knew it. You didn't have to watch wrestling to know where suck it came from. Um, and all that. DX, I mean, come on, uh, the best group. Um, so DX for me too. We'll talk about them later. All right. We are done with round one. Uh, we are down to only eight, uh, eight teams left. Um, so let's start off round two here before we get out of that. You what? <laughs> So where can you check us out at? <laughs> uh, I'm really happy you brought that up. Um, if you don't agree with us uh, in leaving uh, the ministry, one, uh, feel free to hit us up on YouTube uh, or Facebook. <laughs> if, you, if you're watching us on YouTube, Andy's like, why did you choose the ministry, the ministry. <laughs> out of everyone that we love behind? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so hit us up, youtube.com slash hello. Uh, facebook.com slash you dad me at hello we're on anchor fm as well um and we're on basically anywhere you can get your podcast these days so uh check us out uh, we want to continue to uh, do these for you guys um and if you're not a fan of wrestling hang out we're, we're next week we're gonna have another one that's not wrestling um and we have a, a lot of ideas down the pipeline so uh we have a bunch of guests that we have lined up as well um, so it, it should be some exciting, uh, stuff. Um, also, by the way, I, I would also mention that Andy and I are also doing music. So, uh, you can also hit us up, um, on our music sites, bandlab.com. Uh, I think it's slash V rap music. Uh, I might be wrong on that. Um, I know for no, me, it's I'm mine's slash RJ gun. I'm at DJ V rap. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. All right. 
Uh, but we have a new uh, a new song on our uh, YouTube, so check that out too. There'll be links on our Facebook and. Getting into round two, this is going to get a little harder. Uh, this first one is the NWO versus the New Day. Um, you know, again, New Day has done some incredible things. Kofi Mania was the a really important um, piece of, of history in WWE because they listen to the fans. You know, this was an opportunity out of out of the blue for Kofi Kingston and the fans got behind it and WWE actually did the right thing and listened. They heard the pop that he got, the the support. Um and they didn't want to make the same mistake that they did with Daniel Bryan when the same thing happened to him years prior. And they pushed Kofi into that role and you know and Daniel Bryan lost to Kofi Kingston. He won the title. And then they did him wrong with the whole like 10 second loss or whatever it was to Brock Lesnar. But that's beyond the point. <laughs> New Day, uh, three guys who get, like you said, you can tell they're friends, um, and they just love what they do. But the NWO was pivotal in wrestling. Um, the end of what they did was a, a big jumbled mess and run by politics behind the scenes that really turned a, a small group into like a group of like 50 people. Um, and you never know who was in the NWO at any time. But regardless of that, it sold T-shirts. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and it got people talking about wrestling. And it got a lot of people who maybe back into wrestling or who weren't into wrestling at all to come over because the NWO was cool. So I'm going with NWO. All right. Um, I think I'm going to shock you here. So NWO, great legacy. <sighs> But I am shocked me <laughs> for over five years, and even at their end currently, which I don't think is their end because they're still tag team champions, um, they haven't had those weird moments that can't be explained. Like they're a good tag team, they always have been, and they're still together. You had the finger poke of doom uh, with the NWO. Uh, if you think about it, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall were never good wrestlers. Um, overall, uh, Scott Hall was great as Razor Ramon and, and Diesel wrestling wise. But once they got to WCW, did they even wrestle? I feel like most of the time they just walked around the ring and maybe get attacked people every once in a while. Hulk Hogan is one of the worst wrestlers in the world as far as in wrestling ability. Um, so wrestling wise, the NWO didn't really have it. And the fact that they had to disband into two or three other groups, um, the amount of people that were in that, there's not even a list anywhere. I'm looking right now. There's just, oh, they got a whole Wikipedia page for how many people are in it. And it has more than it can fill my screen right now. <laughs> um, let me just say right now, Disco Inferno was in it. So I'm going to go with The New Day. So that means we have to go with uh, Randy, Randy and... That's true. All right. And Randy goes with the NWO. I hate you. I I hate a little bit of myself, too. This is your fault, really. Um, maybe, maybe when they put the belt on Big E, we'll do this podcast again and they'll win the whole well, thing. Kofi wasn't enough for you? Come on. Uh, oh, the other thing I was going to mention, the New Day. Just like the NWO, you know, across the lines, the New Day is in the gaming world. Uh, the New Day was across uh, the the ocean with with New Japan and the Bullet Club, the Elite. Um, you know, you were watching YouTube clips just to see their interactions online with the Bullet Club uh, and the Elite. They were doing things outside of WWE while in WWE, which is hard to do. Um, so that was another reason they were on there. But, anyways, moving on. Undisputed Era versus the Corporation. Undisputed Era, man. They <laughs> are. <laughs> Amazing. Adam Cole, baby, is my uh, kid's favorite wrestler. Liam loves uh, Adam Cole. He does the whole Adam Cole, uh, baby thing whenever it happens. Um, Corporation, um, I'm still mad they beat the nation in the first round. They shouldn't be here. Undisputed Era. All right. I feel like I got to do you one right here. Um, either way, I was going to go with Undisputed Era. I, I, I think they've just begun what yeah. they're going to be doing in that company so that's true 
All right, moving on. We got the Wyatts versus the Shield. This is a WWE pay per view from three years ago. Ooh, my fingers. I look weird on camera. Um, I'm going with the Shield. I, yeah, you had three, three members who became three really popular singles stars. Um, and I feel like they just had more of an impact on the Wyatt family did even at that time. You know, Bray Wyatt was cool, um, but they didn't really do much with Rowan and with Harper. And even when Braun came in, um, it was kind of like stop and go with the Wyatts a lot of times. And you got like these, I don't know, they kind of lost me uh, mm. sometimes. And I like and I like all three of them. And Luke Harper is now at AEW doing his thing, which was long, long overdue. Um, but, you know, the Shield were just, they were cool. Like, yeah. and... Any one of them could have been champ within that group, and that mm-hmm. that's a pretty big feat uh, for a faction or a group. So that's true. Well, the shield. I'll agree with you on the shield, and it's for one reason: um, they didn't use the Wyatts to their full capability. Um, y- you know, Harper and Rowan are really good wrestlers um, for their size as well, um, and and you can see that in Brody Lee in AEW. Um, Bray Wyatt doing amazing with the fiend right now. Um, his character will go down in my opinion, um, as our new age undertaker character, you know, he's going to be someone that I think we'll talk about for a very long time. Um, he doesn't have the success that the undertaker has, um, you know, as far as an actual success in the ring. Yeah. (laughs) Um, but, but his character is amazing. Uh, but the shield overall, um, like you said, uh, moving on. Finally, in I didn't say the, moving on. <laughs> finally, moving uh, into the last of round two, and then we're in our semifinals: the Bullet Club versus Degeneration X. Bullet Club was kind of like I, you know I said they were kind of like the new NWO, but they're kind of like the new DX. You know, they had the whole you know too sweet, um, you know their little click going on. Um, as much as I <laughs> cringe uh, when DX comes back on my my screen, um, because I know they're going to take up half hour of my time, um, they're they're more important to to wrestling. Um, you know, you you had NWO who were really important to bring people in um, back in the wrestling. DX was doing the same thing at the same time. So depending on what side you were looking at, who you thought was cool. Uh, that's where you, you kind of went. You were on either WWF side or, or WCW. Um, they did the whole um, attacking WCW with the tank, going to one of their shows, the live shows, and um, you know the whole speech that they did where you can't say the bad words, and yet they were still throwing the words in that you couldn't say. Um, so they had they had these really crazy moments um, that are gonna live on in, in wrestling history. Um, and very well deserved. So I'm going with DX. Yeah, I won't take up too much time. DX, um, their parody with the corporation when DX came out dressed like the corporation, um, even though it's also one of the uh, more sensitive topics with X Pac being in blackface uh, for Mark Henry, um, with Mark Henry's blessing, but still not not a good choice. Um, their parody, uh, I think it also had the dude who sounded like Owen Hart um was was part of that too um so just really really funny uh gimmicks they they also did that to shane and and vince later in the reform reformation of dx um where they pretended to be the mcmahons um i remember when Shawn michaels left at wrestlemania 14 i thought dx would be over you know it was him and triple h in china they were gearing up for the outlaws to come in and then triple and then sean leaves um, and then the next night on Raw, Sean, uh, Triple H introduces the New Age Outlaws and X-Pac. And it's one, it becomes the biggest group, you know, that we're still talking about today. So DX moves on to the semifinals. We are now in the semifinals. There are only four groups left here, and I think they're pretty big groups. Um, but here it is, NWO versus the Undisputed Era. Long pause. Is that long <laughs> enough for you? 
Um, Undisputed Era, like I said, four of my my favorites. Um, I, this is kind of odd saying this, but they're only in NXT. They haven't been put up there on the main stage. You know, NXT does have their own show and sometimes way better wrestling quality. It's not it's not Raw or SmackDown. Um, so until they get to that point and they start winning titles over there, I feel like it's unfair comparison. I don't like where NWO went, but when they where they started, um, they were they were the better group. So I'm going with NWO. Too much disgust that I'm even having those words come out of my mouth. <laughs> I'm going with NWO. Man, uh, you know, are we talking about? And I don't think we ever really talked about what we're looking for here. Are we talking about a legacy in the business? Are we talking about wrestling? Are we talking about you know characters? Uh, Undisputed Era, you're right. It's not going to have the impact on the legacy if all they ever do is NXT. You know, I, I, if they don't ever come up to Raw or SmackDown or, you know, invade another organization, um, they might get forgotten, you know, um, and I hate saying that. Uh, NWO is, is, is huge. Um, but wrestling wise, all four of oh, Undisputed no Era, in there, yeah, right? <laughs> um, you know, they were the first group to hold all the titles in nxt um which is huge the fact that they pushed kyle o'reilly uh to face finn balor a couple weeks ago and make it credible um not that he's not credible he's a great wrestler but in nxt he was a tag guy so but to make him a one-on-one versus finn balor um was great um i it hurts me i don't think i can vote against that disputed era even against the nwo um <sighs> Ooh, long pause from RJ. <laughs> um, NWO, NWO. All right, I know. Doesn't it feel like your soul leaves your body? <laughs> <laughs> All right, the last of the semifinals here. We have the Shield versus Degeneration X. Woo! This is gonna be a hot topic. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, uh, hey, well, you yeah, know, what are you gonna say? Wait, hear Degeneration you. X had a pay per view named after them. <laughs> <laughs> Degeneration X in your house. I think it was Shawn Michaels versus Ken Shamrock. Uh, it was in Springfield, Massachusetts. That alone, they should win everything. Um, no, I, ah, oh, man, they, they just. X-Pac, New Age Outlaws, great wrestlers. I know they don't get, like, a good rap, you know, uh, overall, but, like, Billy Gunn is probably one of the better-looking dudes in the business. I mean, he was a he was a big dude. He was, uh, you know, supernaturally strong. The Road Dog, one of the best talkers in the business. Um, X-Pac, just kind of a nutbag, but, like, super cool. Um, Triple H, you know, I don't know. I, I'm going to go with DX on this. The Shield is, I, they were like super cool. Um, you know, like I, I think I said basically everything I want to say about them. Maybe in, in 10 years when John Moxley comes back to WWE and they do a reunion in the ring and the fans go absolutely crazy for it, maybe we'll say that they have, um, are, are in a better spot to move on to the finals. But I'm going with I'm going with DX for all the reasons that you just mentioned. All right. And I, th- I think we're getting a final that everybody thought we would get to. That's and true. I, I feel like a lot of people would be like, "Oh, you sold out," because we're about we're about the wrestling, but we're looking at a bigger picture here. I think we're 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 doing it fair. We're you know when you talk about factions like the two groups that are in the finals right now. That's who you think about when you think about factions in, in wrestling. I'll agree. Um, it still hurts my soul that we left Undisputed Era behind uh, with NWO, but uh, you're right. It's NWO and DX are in everybody's top, um, no matter what. Um, they're they're in the top. Um, yeah. So let's let's get to it. This is the finals. We're determining 
the number one faction of our time in the 90s and 2000s. We have NWO and DX, best faction of our time. I'm going to start with NWO here. Um, when I was watching wrestling in the 90s, I was a WWE guy. Uh, I would go over to WCW in the meantime, mainly during commercials. We had commercials then, and you had to go back and forth really quickly. Um, and I didn't record WCW, so I am not a WCW guy at all. Um, I've seen things. I've watched uh, documentaries on the Monday Night Wars um, and things like that. And and I love WCW for their cruiserweights mainly um, because they know how to do cruiserweights correctly. WWE did not. Uh, maybe still doesn't. Um, but, I mean, DX invading WCW, um, a direct hit. Uh, to them, uh, DX having that feud with Bret Hart, where they, you know, essentially kicked him out of w WWF at the time in the Montreal screw job. Um, they're responsible for some of the biggest things, including attacking WCW, which had NWO. NWO didn't do that back. You know, they did that lame, you know, crossover later in the invasion, uh, like a year or two after the official invasion. But, um, you know, at this rate, DX has got my vote. Um, I know you joke about it, but uh, every time they reunite, uh, it's fun. It's not serious most of the time, um, but it, it's fun to see them come out. We, you and I, saw Billy Gunn um, on a baseball field in Connecticut. You know where he came out and did the did the suck a chant, and uh, it's just fun. It's fun seeing him. Uh, it's cool seeing him in AEW uh, it's again. Fun and suck it while a bunch of kids are in the crowd. <laughs> that's true i mean the, the dude's already nothing, in, he's short nothing, shorts yeah there's nothing weird about like a an eight-year-old yelling suck it at some middle-aged man in the ring i mean they're also responsible, next to him at heart. <laughs> they're responsible for mike tyson you know at, at wrestlemania 14 uh joining you know dx for for a little bit there before he turned on them um but anyways um dx has got my vote all right so NWO started off hot. Um, Hall Nash and Hogan, Bischoff. And then it just, just like WCW, it got out of hand really fast. Um, they were the center of attention on the show. And it drove me crazy. when I When I go back and I try to watch some random wcw thunder match or uh, nitro whatever and i'm watching regal or dean malenko or the cruiserweights and i'm like oh man yeah this match is going crazy and then you got a cutaway to vincent or whoever in the crowd oh it's the nwo's here let's go backstage and they cut away from the match and i'm like i don't care i want to see these two guys in the ring um and then DX, yeah, as much as I, I cared about them, like, always coming back, um, they stay true to to themselves. They make fun of themselves, you know, because, you know, again, they're getting older, you know, still trying to get away with some of the jokes and stuff like that. Um, so I, I appreciate that. Um, they never really had those blow-up moments like the nwo where they turned into seven different groups or whoever and you don't know who's who and who's in what group and now here's some other guy with a black nwo shirt and then they had the whole you know vince brought them back uh to take over the wwe and that i mean yeah it led to a cool rock versus hogan match um which nobody ever thought they would ever see um and then it just fizzled dx did a lot of cool things things that you're going to remember for a very very long time in wrestling no matter how old you are um so my pick is dx nice nice so you heard it here whether you agree with us or not the official faction of our time 90s 2000s is degeneration x it's official uh, nobody can dispute it it is undisputed. It's undisputed. <laughs> the team, the DX that won worst feud of the year in 2006 and worst match of the year in 2018 versus oh, the Brothers oh. of Destruction. <laughs> but it's okay. it's one it's a it's a it's a car accident. You don't want it to happen, but when it does, you're gonna watch it. 
uh, laughing hysterically when Kane's mask <laughs> fell off, when Shawn Michaels did the moonsault on and caught him. Oh, I gosh. was like in absolute hysterics and undertaker just getting visibly upset during the entire thing oh man yeah it was definitely it wasn't it was worse than a car crash that was a that's thing. true i don't know what's what's worse <laughs> 2020 it was 2020 in a wrestling match that's what it was that's true that's true um you know one other thing i'll throw out there dx is responsible for a lot of funny moments but if you remember the Generation X got inducted into the Hall of Fame, and Billy Gunn was already part of AEW at that time, and they brought everybody back. And during the induction, um, Vince Mc, uh, or I'm sorry, Triple H literally says, joking that Vince McMahon would buy that pissant company just to fire you again. <laughs> like you can't get away with that unless you're Triple H and Shawn Michaels. So um, it's it's funny, dude. I love seeing Triple H and Shawn Michaels lead NXT. Uh, and do their thing down there. Um, they're good friends, and you can tell. So it's good. Anyways, I think that's <laughs> it, guys. <laughs> uh, let us know how you feel. Again, we are on Facebook and YouTube and anywhere else you can get your audio podcast. Uh, but feel free to subscribe. Hit that like button on Facebook and uh, comment. We need people to talk to us so we can understand if we're doing uh, things uh, that you want to hear. If you have any ideas for upcoming topics, uh, please let us know. Um, I know we have some other topics down the line, um, which include um, uh, movie sequels. Um, and then, Andy, you had one today that we're working on soon, uh, fantasy card uh, drafting as well for uh, WCW and WWE. Yeah, take you know uh, an era of a certain promotion and their their crew their roster against another era of another promotion and who are your dream matches we'll we'll talk about that nice i'm looking forward to the next couple of weeks as we get some more judges or judges <laughs> judges slash hosts simon cowell's uh, coming on <laughs> <laughs> jennifer uh, lopez <laughs> um get some more more hosts on here uh shout out um to to my good friend pete hutch who is uh, one of the first people to uh to throw his name in the in the card so you'll be hearing from him soon um but anyways thank you for joining us again this has been another episode of you dad me at hello uh you didn't ask for it but we're here anyway have a good one